So when I first saw this one, I thought that this was satire. Apparently it's not. Seek help. Seek help. Hello Underachievers! So, just before we get into the video, I want to let you guys know that I'm releasing a brand new song on September 14th, it's called La La La. There is a pre-save link down there, you can pre-save it, that would really help. There's a clip on TikTok of a snippet of the song, if you want to see that, if you want to hear that, that would be cool, but yeah, new song. Set reminders, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your sister, tell your dog, tell your nan, even if she's not with us anymore. I'm sorry your nan died. Also, I'm going on tour in the UK very, very, very soon. There are a few tickets left and here are the dates. So, trans people. People think we're crazy. They think we're insane for not being like them. I have a theory that the trans are the crazy ones. I think there is something wrong with them. If you're not following me yet, stick around. Uh, I will, I will show you something. Today I'll bring you some proof that trans and not okay. So this tweet that I saw on Twitter, it did get tweeted. I saw it and it kind of inspired this whole video. I was like, I feel like I just need to monetize this. And uh, it's this woman and she tweeted this. We are looking for links to videos of men masturbating in women's toilets. Can someone help us via DM? That's interesting, Caroline. There's, there's nothing wrong with, you know, asking for I guess asking for links, any recommendations, but the thing that is kind of the whole reason that this was tweeted out, the tweet underneath this says, trans identify Men. If you didn't know already, you're not up with the lingo. Turfs call trans women trans identified men because they just gotta make sure that they let you know that they think you're a man. So yes, this woman is asking for videos of trans women masturbating <laughs> in women's bathrooms. <laughs> Weird. I do not know where this whole thing started, where people were terrified of trans women being predators, they were scared of sharing bathrooms with trans women. I think it originates from the, uh, you know, old school homophobia, where straight people did not want to share their bathrooms, their changing rooms with gay people, because they were terrified that the gay people were gonna touch them, or look at them, or film them, or do something really inappropriate, which is kind of insane, because being gay does not make you a pervert, and neither does being trans. I just think it's so insane that this turf is looking for videos of trans women masturbating <laughs> in women's bathroom, probably to push a political point that she thinks that trans women are predators. A very, 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 very unhinged thing to put on Twitter. I'm just gonna say, if I were looking to demonize a marginalized group, I would not do it on a public Twitter account where my face and name are on it. You gotta applaud the bravery. Well, thank you, Caroline, for that. That's really weird. So if that first one wasn't enough for you, here's the next one. After their daughters were beat by a girl in sport, Utah parents triggered investigation into whether she was transgender. Say you're a parent and your kid loses a sports competition, instead of being like, hey, that's okay. This is a learning experience. We all lose sometimes. They're like, no, there's no possible way that my daughter got beat. The person that beat my daughter has to be a trans woman. It has to be somebody that used to be a guy. It then goes on to say that the school opened the girl's enrollment records dating back to kindergarten to confirm she was female. So that's weird. There's so much rubbish in the media pushing this hatred towards trans women and you know, this is this is where it takes us. You're a sore loser? No, not possible, not possible. I, I had to be beat by a trans woman. I feel like I don't really need to explain why this is insane, but uh, moving on. So we've got this lovely cartoon that says trans women are women, yep. Can't lie. And underneath it, it says, a thousand years after, this is a male skeleton. Now, this is one of my favorite kind of thing that transphobes do. I've experienced this a lot. I, you may have seen my video where I ranked my favorite hate comments on a tier list. A thing that transphobes like to do is to tell trans people like, hey, you may think you're a woman now, you may think you're a man now, but in a thousand years, they'll dig up your dead body, they'll see your skeleton and realize the truth that you're trans. I don't know, it's insane. I personally, as a trans person, this is just, this is just me, this is just me, I don't, I don't speak for anybody else. I don't give a shit about what people a thousand years away think of my skeleton. That's not something that's on my mind, it doesn't bother me 24-7, it doesn't bother me one minute of the 24-7. Transphobes, for some reason, are so obsessed with, like, biology, and this whole point that transphobes make about, like, being dead and having your skeleton dug up, kind of weird, and I feel like it's purely motivated by just trying to hurt people's feelings. We don't gain anything, really, by bringing attention the skeleton of a, a dead a dead trans person. It's just weird. It's just a bit weird. Now, speaking of the phrase trans women are women, we've got this tweet. Trans women are trans women. Trans men are trans men. Biology will always matter. Hashtag trans. Now, this kind of just reminds me of the whole idea that Ben Shapiro supports of pronouns being biological. As in like, you were born one way, you have to use this specific set of pronouns, otherwise you're wrong. And it confuses my tiny little brain, I don't understand. Trans women are trans women. 
They're also women. There's just the word trans in front. I, I feel like that distracts a lot of people, but trans woman is a woman that is trans. You're welcome for clearing that up. What really interests me about transphobes that are so focused on biology is that like, they think they're achieving something by pointing out somebody's biology. As if trans people don't already know what their body is like and what their biology is, you know? It's kind of weird. Like when I say I'm a guy, I'm not trying to tell people that my biology is the exact same as somebody that was born a guy. I don't, I don't know where that was lost in translation, but it seems to really confuse people. Oh, another trans woman a woman tweet. Unsurprisingly, there are a lot of tweets about trans women. Um, we're not surprised. So this is a quote tweet in response to a tweet that says, do you accept that trans women are women? And the person quote tweeting says, trans women are women in the same way that cuckoos are birds. Yeah. Cuckoos are birds. Trans women are women. You've not, you've not, you've not quite made the point that you thought you did. If you type in cuckoo to Wikipedia, the first line is cuckoos are birds. So here's our old friend, Arielle Scarcella. If you don't know who she is, don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. I'll do a little bit of an explanation. She is a lesbian YouTuber who left the left because they're insane and woke. And she's got quite the knack for transphobia. She's quite good at it. So here's a tweet that she made, which I love. Having blue hair doesn't make you trans. Hashtag bring back trans. Reminder to all the trans teens out there, being trans has become a fad. Thing is, it's not. It's a very real mental condition called gender dysphoria. And she's sat holding a sign saying, having blue hair doesn't make you trans. In which, of course, I made this. I think, I think it's quite good. I can't lie, I think it's quite good. But just the line, having blue hair doesn't make you trans, hashtag bring back trans, that's insane to me. That is hilarious. I'm pretty sure the general consensus is that it's not trans people that are saying if you have blue hair, you're trans. I've seen a lot of transphobes and a lot of people that like aren't that educated on trans stuff say like, oh, you're blue hair with pronouns. This is, this is the level of argument. Argument. This is the level of debate that we have with these people. It kind of reminds me of the whole like blue hair, red hair feminist thing that was going on back in the day on the internet where people would call women who were speaking out about sexism um, like triggered snowflakes. I truly do think this one is for the history books though. I really want to see this picture of Ariel with this sign in, in a textbook in 200 years. I'm really excited for the future where this whole transphobic ideology dies out and people just realize like, hey, let's just let trans people live their lives. I'm really excited for that day because stuff like like this will be even funnier then. These people just have the assumption that anybody that's young that identifies as trans is like, they're having a phase, they're going through a phase, they're just crazy, they're just long lost lesbians, you know the vibe. Uh, but yeah, this is just an insane tweet. So this is a lovely forum post, someone's looking for advice. My brother, 13, came out as transgender. I'm making this post because I don't know what to do. Two weeks ago, my brother came out to my family as transgender. He was born a boy. I have seen how happy it makes him when we refer to him as a girl. And at the end of the day, he's family and I want him to be happy. However, I'm not sure how this all fits into my feminist beliefs and ideals. So first off, there is something deeply unsettling about seeing your sibling being happy and being conflicted about it because it doesn't align with your political views for them to be happy. Like, hey guys, I really need some help. My sister finally got out of that really dark place she was in and now she's finally happy, but I don't like it. I don't like why she's happy, it's weird. The response to this post was, hold the line, be transphobic, it's a fetish. This is really funny to me in the most ridiculous way. I don't know how we've managed to get to this point. Like, this is like six levels down. This is like crazy stuff. It's also just weird to think that being trans is a fetish. It's not. I think this stems from the idea of autogynophilia, which apparently means that trans women aren't actually trans women. They just get off on the idea of being a woman. I think that's where this person is coming from. But I don't know how you can see your sibling finally being happy and thinking, mmm, this is bad for me. So this is from an account called Women Are Women, which is a good point. Really, really interesting insight from you. It's an article of Emma Watson saying, Emma Watson revives her iconic pixie cut to front Prada beauty campaign. And this person said, how long before the they them announcement, which I think is insane. A lot of TERFs think that people are too scared to be gender non-conforming, as in like being a girl with short hair that wears like men's clothes. A lot of TERFs think that non-binary people or trans men are only transitioning or identifying as trans to run away from the idea that they could potentially be just a gender non-conforming girl. Like they'll see a trans guy with short hair and be like, oh, you know, you could be a pretty woman and still have short hair. You don't have to be a man. But I just think like, how have you really just seen a picture of a woman with short hair and just assume that she's gonna come out as non-binary? That's a bit contradictory, don't you think? This next one, real short, real simple. Ladies, if your boyfriend has he, him in his bio, then you have a girlfriend. Get it? Cause putting your pronouns in your bio makes you a girl. Cause that's weird and feminine, putting your pronouns in your bio, even though everyone has pronouns. Get it? <laughs> You're a weird guy. So this next one. Is there a word for people who deny reality? In this instance, the physiological difference between men and women. There seems to be rather a lot of American women that do not believe there are significant differences in height, strength, musculature, 
etc. And then she's shown two pictures of the skeletons of a man and a woman. I think a lot of TERFs just have this inability to understand what people are saying without purposely trying to misconstrue it. Nobody is saying that there are no biological differences between males and females. No one is doing that. There's obviously biological differences. If I thought that there was no biological difference between my body and the body of somebody that was born a guy, I would not transition. The whole point is that I know that there's a difference and all I'm trying to do is align that. But yeah, of course, comes back down to the skeleton because that's really what matters when trans people just want to live. We just want to be able to live. You people really make it deeper than it really is. So when I first saw this one, I thought that this was satire. Apparently it's not. Lately there's been a spike of superphobia in the United States, which if you don't know what that means, there was this whole thing maybe a year ago on the internet where people started identifying as super straight because uh, they don't want to date trans people that bad that they decided to change the label of their sexuality exclusively to exclude trans people. So say you're a super straight guy, you wouldn't date a trans woman. You don't have to date a trans woman, but the people that were identifying as super straight were most of the time just pushing out transphobia into the world. They weren't actually feeling marginalized. They just wanted to hate on trans people. So lately there's been a spike of superphobia in the United States. Bigot, transphobe, it's not a real sexuality, but be careful who you antagonize while some super straights are out of the closet. Not everyone is so lucky and it's just, it's just this picture. This person takes off the bi flag colored hoodie and reveal a super straight t-shirt. Seek help. So here's a question. Which toilet do non-binary people use? And Jordan responded, the one in which they are most likely to get a reaction by making someone elderly feel uncomfortable, i.e. the women's. These people think we live our life purposely trying to make people uncomfortable, purposely trying to strike up controversy. I do not know a single trans person like that. And I know every single one. I know the entire trans community, elite, I'm joking. I know a lot of trans people though. But this whole bathroom issue is insane. When a trans woman goes into the bathroom, she just wants to pee. She just wants to get in there, pee and get out. Cause I imagine it's probably a bit terrifying with the rise of stuff like this coming out. Trans women probably don't feel very safe in the women's bathroom. They're definitely not straight in the men's bathroom. Straight? <laughs> safe in the men's bathroom. But yeah, you know, it's really cool to know that just by existing, it's making old people uncomfortable. The sun has decided to hate me today, so there's a pillow now instead of the sun. Earlier this month, then YMCA member Julie Jaman took a keen interest in the genitalia of an 18 year old employee who was helping girls use the bathroom in accordance with the YMCA's summer camp policy. In her own widely circulated retelling of the incident, Jaman said she felt concerned about the young trans woman's presence around children. And so she asked the worker about her genitals. When the worker said that was none of her business, she told the worker to leave the locker room, which violated the YMCA's code of conduct. Accordingly, staff banned Jaman man from the pool. Well, it's great she was banned, but here's what happens when transphobes try to fearmonger about trans people. It has genuine real life repercussions on real life trans people. What really bothers me about this kind of stuff is that trans women are always seen as the bad people. They're always seen as the predators. They're always seen as a danger to children. Despite the fact that people like this that ask about the genitals of teenagers are, you know, just living their life. They're just thinking they're being completely normal and not unhinged. There is something wrong with you if you hyper-focus on people's genitals. There is something wrong with you if you think that having one set of genitals means that you're going to be really dodgy with kids. It's just weird. I don't want to think about that one too much, but here's the last one, so savor it while you can. So it's a screenshot of somebody's Twitter, and her bio is Storyteller, Intersectional Feminist, Proud Parent of a Trans Son, and that's been highlighted. And then somebody quote tweeted this screenshot and said, I am glad this is now declared. It's more honest. At least two other high profile people, both very fond of the word transphobia, have undeclared trans identified offspring. They are not unbiased. It is relevant information for onlookers. Now, so think of this, uh, you're a parent and you have a kid and your kid turns out to be trans, which makes you very, very, very aware of the transphobia that trans kids go through right now. It makes you very aware of the media attack on trans people. I think it's kind of normal that as a parent of a trans person, you're more aware of transphobia. I think you're more aware of when people are being transphobic. Like, of course, they're not unbiased about trans stuff because they've seen the realities that trans people face, especially trans kids. It's like seeing a mom being like, hey, this is my kid, he's black, and somebody being like, oh, this person's unbiased. They keep calling people racist. Like, why do you think that will be? But yeah, anyway, that's the end of the video. If you want me to make another video like this, let me know in the comments. And yeah, but have a good day or don't. See you later, losers. Goodbye. I hate the sun. I hate the sun.